Good morning. It is great to be back in the shop today. It's been cold and wet in Southern California the last few days. And while it's still kind of a brisk 45 out this morning, at least the sun is out. Looks like it's going to be a great day. And I get to start my great guitar build off project today, which is super exciting. So what's the first step in any guitar build? How to make a surfboard, of course. So for my build-off project this year, uh, I really want to try to find a way to bring together two things that I really love, guitar building and surfing. And so I thought, naturally, I'll build a surf guitar. So I started to look around and try to figure out, you know, what, what is a surf guitar? What does that mean? And if you look back at some of the sort of classic surf bands, uh, you know, Beach Boys and Jan and Dean and those kind of folks, um, there was no sort of standard surf guitar. A lot of them played Mustangs. Uh, you saw a lot of Strats and maybe an LP here and there. Um, but ultimately, you know, there's no sort of, at least as far as I could tell, a classic definition of a surf guitar. Uh, so then I thought, okay, what if I could figure out a way to sort of literally bring uh, guitar and surf together into one thing? What would that look like? Um, and I was reminded of a guitar that I saw this is maybe three years ago at the NAM convention in Anaheim, built by a guy named Michael Sankey, um, who I met Mr. Sankey. I don't actually know him, so I don't want to you know, claim some relationship I don't have. Um, but he built this cool guitar that was uh, cut out of and then mounted back into this giant slab of wood that he had made the guitar from. Um, and I thought, what if I could make a guitar out of a surfboard like that, like cut the guitar body out of the surfboard uh, and then have, and then mount the guitar back into the surfboard afterwards. Um, and I thought that was a cool idea, except that most of the time uh, a surfboard is either made of foam or if it's made of wood, uh, it's, it's usually hollow, so that it doesn't weigh a million pounds. Um, now there are some solid wood sort of plank surfboards, uh, they're called allies. Um, but they're usually too thin um, and not quite right to make a guitar body out. So what I realized is that I'm going to have to build a surfboard that can be used to make a guitar out of. So that's what I decided to do. So uh, first step in on my guitar, great guitar build off project this year is to build a surfboard that I can cut a guitar body out of. So that's what you see here sort of starting up in the workshop. Uh, I've got uh, about 56 board feet of uh, redwood here that I'm going to use because it's uh, sort of naturally good and with water and um, is uh, not as heavy as a lot of other kinds of woods. And I'm going to intersperse uh, some other species of wood, probably some maple or some other things that are a little harder uh, and a little heavier in just for design's sake. Um, but this is where we're going. So. Uh, episode one of the Cal Style Great Guitar Build Off video series is going to be me building a chambered wooden surfboard that will eventually uh, become a cool surf guitar. All right, let's get into it. And as is tradition with any build, the first thing you do is make templates, right? So I'm making here a template that is sort of the side profile of the surfboard. And I'll use that to cut out the profile shape from each of the redwood boards uh, on Vance off. So all my redwood boards are now cut to rough profile and I've got a variety of shades of wood and some are tighter grain, some are looser grain. And what I need to do now is take these and arrange them in a pattern that's going to look good uh, when it's on a finished board. Um, so in addition to that, I'm going to intersperse some other types of wood, maybe some maple. I just got to go out to the woodstock pile and see what I've got. Um, but I want to put kind of some stripes and some things that will give some, inter some interesting look uh, both to the board and to the section where the guitar is going to get cut out. So I have to start thinking in terms of design of both of those elements as I arrange these boards. So that's what I'm going to do next, sort of arrange for design, but also uh, bring in whatever other boards I'm going to use and get them cut to rock profile as well. So 
So it's the next day, start of the day with a little workshop cleanup and set up to get ready for the day. And this is where I'm at at this point. I've got all my redwood strips cut as well as a maple strip for the center and then two sort of parallel strips uh, as well that will be mapled towards the rear and mahogany towards the nose of the board. And I've got some little accent strips uh, for that that go in between there as well. Now, right now I'm at, uh, what, 22 and a half inches wide. My finish width is 20, but I'm really okay at this point because I've got some width to take out from these uh, parallel maple strips because the maple is thicker than the mahogany. So I got about an inch and a quarter to take out there. And then I'm gonna run everything through the drum sander to make sure that the uh, sides are all um, perfectly flat and ready for glue up, uh, which is a few steps down the line. So once I do all that, I should be pretty good at 20 inches wide. I think my design is good. It's gonna work for the board. It's gonna work for the guitar that comes out of the board later on. So at this point, I need to get these maple pieces into the thickness planer and then run everything through the drum sander to get everything to final uh, finished thickness. Come on now, don't judge me for my dust collection. It's a small shop, I'll do what I can. All right, so everything has been through the drum sander and is smooth on both sides. So those sides are prepared for glue up. What I got now is sort of two categories of things. You can see uh, outside the shed right back here are all my redwood strips. Those are all sort of done and ready to be uh, uh, assembled. But I've also got these here, which are the sort of the decorative inner strips. I don't know what you'd call them. Um, well, we got maple, 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 but then up here on the front end of the maple ones, we've got mahogany on either side. And in here where this transition is from the maple to the mahogany, I'm actually gonna cut some uh, little diagonal pieces and put them in there to give sort of a, a decorative transition between those two pieces of wood uh, so that, that comes together. So uh, that's sort of what I'm up to next. Uh, and then once those are done, uh, I'm gonna glue those up with these um, sort of outer strips to kind of hold them all together. Uh, leave that overnight and then the next thing to do will be to come back and put all of those boards together so I can start cutting out the actual surfboard shape out of the kind of big plank of, of strips. So one full weekend of work under my belt and I made a ton of progress. I got my whole board blank uh, put together and glued up and ready to start to cut to shape. I'll show you a little bit of the detail here. See, it's a six foot board, mostly redwood with uh, three little accent stripes. This one's maple and mahogany. The center one is maple and then another maple mahogany with the little uh, chevrons in there for decoration and then each of those has sort of a little accent stripe on either side of it uh, then with the redwood on either side and uh, a little bit of rocker in the nose a little bit more subtle rocker in the tail and uh, hopefully this will be a board that performs well and will provide some material to make a super cool guitar. So I'm gonna call that a weekend and I'll see you again next time I get back out here. Before we get back to work, I wanna talk a little bit about what this build is really all about. I mean, yeah, it's my entry project for the great guitar build off and I'd love to have a good showing in the competition, but it's really more than about just that. One thing I know is that I've been very fortunate in a lot of ways, even just looking around this workshop, I know that I have a lot of advantages that a lot of other people just don't have access to. 
And I really feel like that privilege comes with a responsibility to give back in some way or, or to pay forward, if you want to think of it that way. And personally, it's important to me to find a way to do that locally, like in the communities that are a part of my daily life. And one of the ways that I found to do that is through the Broam Foundation, which is an organization that was started by the band Switchfoot, which just happens to be from the San Diego area right here in Southern California. Now, Broam is an annual event, which, you know, in a normal year, Switchfoot will do a huge free concert on the beach at Moonlight Beach in Encinitas. And part of the week's activities for that is a charity event that includes a charity auction that raises money for a number of organizations in the San Diego area. Now, when it's done, the Maverick Surf Guitar is going to be donated to that charity auction, and all the money that's raised from its sale will go to support these organizations in the San Diego area. Now, there's links to Broam and to each of those organizations in the description down below the video, but in each of my videos, I want to try to highlight one of the organizations that's supported by the Broam Foundation, and today I want to talk a little bit about the Challenged Athletes Foundation. Uh, now, this is an organization that works with folks that have injuries and physical challenges, but want to be able to be involved in sports and be active and uh, be involved in kind of athletic activities and that sort of thing. And they provide uh, equipment and training, even prosthetics for folks with visual impairments, injuries, um, cerebral palsy, folks who have been injured in military service or as first responders, cancer survivors, and it gives those people opportunities to be involved in activities that people like me and maybe like you often take for granted. Surfing, for instance, one that's really close to my heart. So check out the link below to the Challenge Athletes Foundation, visit their website, support them directly if you can, and when the time comes around for the Broam Charity Auction, join in on the fun, bid on some things, maybe even buy this guitar. A lot of people, including myself, will be very grateful. And with that, I guess it's time to get back to work. All right, so I've got the outline of my board uh, just traced out in pencil on the wood. And what I'm going to do next is uh, screw these boards together so that I can cut out the shape of the board, uh, the outline of the board. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take it in two sections, so one half, uh, two halves, and screw the boards together on one half, screw the boards together on the other half, and then glue those together down the middle. Um, just lightly glue, just enough to hold them together while I work with them. So one thing I had to do at this point is make sure I marked out the location of where the guitar is eventually going to come from the body of the board. Because I have to make sure I don't put any holes in that spot where the guitar body is going to be. I want that to be a good solid piece of wood. Now at this point, what I'm doing really starts to bleed over into sort of the art of surfboard shaping. I am definitely not a pro surfboard shaper, not even an amateur really, uh, but I learned a lot from a number of YouTube channels, particularly Andrew W's channel. And I'll put a link to his channel down in the description, but I owe a lot to what I learned from his channel and really appreciate uh, the effort he puts into his how-tos. And if you're interested in surfboard shaping, I uh, would really recommend that you go give his channel a check. So there she is, looking good so far. Now my next step is to shape the side rails of the board. I'm going to start by marking those out with a little metal dowel to get the shape of the rails. A little help from the shop assistant there. And then with those rails marked out, I'm going to chamfer the corners off between the marks and then smooth the chamfer into a curve, the curve profile of the, of the rail. Now fortunately I'm familiar with that activity because that's how I shape necks on guitars, right? So hopefully I'll transfer some of those guitar building skills into board shaping skills. And of course I gotta knock the corners off of the lower edge and the tail. Uh, we don't want too many sharp edges on the sides of the board when we get out in the water. That power planer is great for removing a lot of material. 
but when it comes down to really having good control over what I'm removing, nothing beats a spoke shave. And then back to the power sander to round everything over and smooth those rails down to their final shape. I'm just gonna give you guys a chance to watch me struggle with what at this point is a 68 pound surfboard. Really happy with the way the shape has come out. I think it's looking great. So now, time to deconstruct. Take all the screws out and separate all the boards apart again so that I can then chamber them out and make them more hollow. So we're back to cold and wet in SoCal this morning. I'm going to try not to complain too much because at least I get to be out in the shop doing what I love, right? Uh, and today we're going to get to chambering this surfboard, which means we're going to try to take as much weight out of this thing as we can by hollowing out the inside. The way I'm going to do that is one strip at a time. I'm going to pull this out and uh, take my marking gauge, run a mark down the top and the bottom of each one, and then just mark out in about one foot increments uh, some the spaces to hollow out. I'm gonna take those over to the table to the table saw. I'm gonna take those over to the drill press and uh, hog out as much of that as I can with um, some, probably some spade bits, and then go back in with the jigsaw and even up all the edges of that. Uh, so essentially, cutting you know about one foot chambers throughout each of the strips. And then I'm going to put those all back together and glue them up and we'll have an essentially hollow surfboard with uh, uh, about a quarter inch skin on the top and the bottom and little sort of pillars uh, throughout that are holding the structure together. Now there's a couple of things that I have to do before I can start chambering those out because for instance I've got to leave a solid spot in the board where the guitar body is going to come out of because I don't want a chambered guitar body, I want a solid guitar body. So I have marked out the location of the guitar body in the board, and as I do my chambering, I'm just gonna make sure that I don't put any chambers where that solid body guitar is gonna come out of. And at this point, there's nothing left to do but to start cutting the guts out of this thing. So, here we go. And so it turned out that I decided not to hog out all the material with the drill press. I just drilled a relief holes at the corners and then use the jigsaw to cut out the chambers from corner to corner. Now this will give you a good sense of what each of those boards will look like on the inside hollowed out after they've all been assembled back together and you can't see those hollow spots anymore. All right, so all the chambering is done. The board is almost completely hollow now with the exception of the sections of the boards that are left solid where the guitar body is gonna be cut out of. So it's all ready to go. My next step, glue it all back together. I did the glue up in sections so that I ended up gluing a couple of pieces at a time and then I would let it sit and uh, overnight and then do the next section. So this took three or four days to actually get this all glued together. I was a little concerned about the strength of the joint at the very tail, uh, so I actually cut a slot across the tail and inserted a spline, uh, added some strength back there, and uh, as a, just a design element, it ended up not looking too bad, so I was pretty happy with it. When I got down to those last side pieces that are curved, uh, a couple of ratchet straps work great to clamp those sides together. Well, it's been a long haul, but we're getting close to the end. 
The board is completely assembled and ready for final sanding. I got to smooth out all of the, the irregularities in the boards where they've been glued together and then just get it all down to final smoothness. Got to round over the nose here a little bit and probably the tail a little bit too. It's a little bit sharp on that end. And then once the sanding is all done, be ready to put some epoxy on it, seal it all up, and then take it out to the water. See if we can surf it without killing ourselves. And I just want you to notice when I pick up this board in just a second, it is much lighter now. At this point, the weight was about 22 pounds. Final weight ended up being about 25 pounds, which is kind of heavy for a surfboard, but uh, for what we were doing with it, it actually turned out great. The weight was not a problem at all. So I laser engraved a cow style logo and then inlaid that into the top of the board uh, just to give myself that sort of traditional surfboard logo look. All right, sanding's all done. The board is ready for epoxy. I got it set up here on the bench, got a tarp laid down, I'm all ready to go. Honestly, this is a terrifying stage of the project for me for two reasons. One, I've never done a big epoxy coating, epoxy resin pour kind of thing before. So it's new to me and that's scary because I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. The other thing is, is this is one of those stages of the project where if I screw this up, I've basically ruined the whole thing. Uh, all the work that I've done just goes into the bin and I start from scratch. That is also intimidating. But I mean, there's nothing to do but just to do it and see if it works, <laughs> see if I can figure it out. The epoxy products I'm using are from Greenlight Surf Supply. Uh, I'll put a link to them down in the description. Uh, they're not sponsored or anything, but um, they worked great and they seem like a pretty good company. So if you're interested, you can check them out. So that's the top all in one pour uh, and then sort of smoothed off with a chip brush. Did the same thing with the bottom. Uh, it went pretty uneventfully, came out fine, and then moved on to fins after that. The fins are made from Urban Ash from Street Tree Revival right down here in Anaheim. Uh, just cut them using some fins that I had on hand as a shape and then foiled them by hand and then glassed them onto the bottom of the board. Went with a basic thruster setup what I'm familiar with, so I just stuck with that. It's a pretty traditional design. And that's it. The work's done. Who knew building a surfboard was so hard? All that's left is the having fun part. So Zach and I are going to take this board down to the Newport Pier tomorrow morning and see if we can catch a wave. Hopefully it'll perform pretty well and we'll be able to get some surfing in. Uh, if not, at least we get a break from the workshop, get out on the beach, out in the ocean, and that'll be fun. Then of course we're gonna bring this board back into the workshop and cut a big hole in it, which will be a little bit scary, but that'll be the first step in turning this into a cool guitar. We'll pick that up on the next episode. Uh, until then, we'll leave you with some surf footage. Get out there, do what you love, and I'll see you next time. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm running out of wax. <laughs>waves were a little small we had a little bit of a hard time getting enough wave to ride this board but it performed really well and we just had a blast
This little guy and his dad came by, really interested in the board. His dad was really excited to show us how his little guy could surf. Thanks for watching.